the twilight zone. 1959 sounds and silences. You lock the door with a key of imagination. Beyond is another dimension, dimension of sound, dimension of sight, dimension of mind. You're moving into the land, both shadow and substance of things and ideas. Just cross over into the twilight zone. Let's get on with it, conking. A tight office is a happy office. Idle hands make for a productive poop deck. Belay that Miss Elvery Elvery. Extra sensitivity is nothing more or less than sloppy seamanship, a manner of speaking. You here, there, food and nature. Let's keep an even keel there, a manner of speaking. Let's keep an even keel there, man. For all that you bear in mind, you must all of us go aft, climb up the old mast, in a manner of speaking. Set our sights on a distant, to a distant horizon. Clip ship, a happy ship. Damn the torpedoes of competition. And falls me head, well shot, Mr. Conkey. Right enough between Captain of Lion eyeballs. His exceptional voice, my ears are still ringing. You know that foot boy is headed for mutiny. Where would you find a plank heavy enough to hold him? What I think of the, all the commissaries. A flu at us during the war, wouldn't you think just one would have hit him? One of these days, all that noise is going to come back and bite him. I hope it's around, I'm around to see it happen. This is Roswell G. Fremington. Lung tissue and sound density. He, as you perceive, a noisy man. One braid substitutes live volume for substance. Sound for substance, shouting to cover up the red bean, apparent premonition. Phenomenon is nothing more than overweight, aging peripheral ski scout, whose noise making is averse rate and ratio to competence of his character. But soon one would be admiral of the fleet will embark on another voyage. This one of uncharted and twisting steam. The heads for a distant post called Night Twilight Zone. Hello, hello. Who? Oh, just a moment. I can't, I can't hear you, please. Roswell, Roswell, you turn it down just a little, a little bit. I can't hear a thing on the telephone. You know what it that what it is that is that. Do you know what that is, Biden? Collect an item. As he sounds. How sounds the battleship Morozari, a body no Kosari. I can't hear who's on the phone. Lay on, gentlemen. Let them know what's what. By our will, and by the good Lord Harry, they shall show them how the lady treats aggression. And that, madam, was an act of utter domination. Most callous vandalism. May I remind you that these actual sounds of the Battle of Missouri bombarding and Gowari, there were only a hundred such records of existence. Now there are only 99. What you have done, madam, is an act of dis- discretion. Not like this facing the statue of John Paul Jones. What are you, madam? Some sort of fanatic? Roswell, we had this from out before. What was once an it's so frequency, yours is our session. This is insistent of blaring noises and running a household like a destroyer escort and convoy duty combination and how now become impossible. I can't live with it. Stand, madam, or I'll knock it off well as well. You're an insensible, noisy clown, but you are not stupid. Have I had you up to here? And my eyes have had you. And my stomach lies had you. Whatever a pot of brain that keeps a person balanced has had you too. In short as well, I have had you have absolutely completely thunderstuck. You now, you now, I am indeed my own wife. I've been only years. I wasn't taken a language marriage. I was washed, pipe. I was piped aboard. 
and after 20 years of shrill piping, become absolutely intolerable, bearable. So at this point, was well, I'm leaving in a manner of speaking the ship's company. You're deserting me. The matter of speaking, was well, you said it. It locked, was well, was locked, was well. It might interest you to know, madam, that when I was a young chap, I had a mother who insisted on she was ill. She was a whiny, petulant, complaining female, similar to yourself. And when I would come home from school, she'd make me walk tiptoe and whisper, whisper, whisper. You know, in our house, we never had any cookies. All we had were fudge brownies because they made less noise when they chewed them. Eat your brownies and run downstairs and change, but keep it quiet. I tell you, madam, I was quiet enough for that. And that is why I want to see see. That is why I spent my life a very wholesome, healthy, and quite understandable, stupid, and free, and and, and fetid. And that is why I'm the owner, manager, chairman of the board and president, Roswell G. Premiton Model Ship Company. Second to none in the field, whose motto is Damn the Tofitos, full steam ahead and for fun and profits. I know the company, I know the president. I know no more this motto. I respect. Well, Mr. Boswell G. Frampton, the following notical praise, which I have been now taking the heart and will proceed to implement. Praise, lay aff and dump the garbage. So, in manner of speaking, consider yourself dump, like dips, sounds of aircraft, leaving the carrier of hornet. Good riddance, madam. I never liked you. I never, I have simply suffered you. Well, nothing abnormal, Mr. Frampton. No access wax, no extraction of any, no information. By the great Lord Harry, claimed of the tapes, Doctor. I tell you that the ship said you wouldn't make a cabin boy, a man is speaking. Frankly, I think consulting a physician might be an extremely practical idea. I only wish you had a medical professional ethics and give me that was advice before you went through motions preliminary examinate professionally perfunctory examination as it is I shall be done with your bill as well bill another a specialist and it's my point the point of fact Mr. Westbrook I wasn't going to recommend another a specialist now I had in mind perhaps some well psychiatric help if uh, you assume you are being homeless sir is only a charitable outlook that prevents you being called to account Psychiatrist? Ah, well, let's uh, tell you, Doctor, I use the term loosely. Uh, there are a few people walking this earth that are sane as I am. I bid you good day, sir, good day. What do you suppose happens if I was ahead? Can't you bless honey? I've been here four years. It's the first time you've been late. Wouldn't it be marvelous his car fell off the ferry boat? A minute, a millennium, absolute millennium. It's the end of the dawn, dream. Good morning, sir. Mr. Friend, I've been here for five years. That's the first time he's walked in without telling me a smoking lamp was not lit and we have to move full speed ahead towards the shores of prosperity. Maybe he's sick. Something incurable, like barnacles on the brain. Very good, Chronicin. Get out of the, your darts. Only forget your portrait. Shoot for the record. That's odd, very odd. Been here ten years and that's the first time I've seen him but frightened. Let it keep it let's keep it quiet out there. Yeah. I just I've just I was just with your permission, Mr. Perimeter. Your shoes. What have you got in them? Pipe organs? This ship's got to shape up. Repeat shape up. Noise is not efficient. Let's kill now. Watch this noise, yes sir. And this I'm very very much taken. It's one of those very odd phenomena suggesting. As a person talks himself into believing, currencies when they're figments of imagination. Beyond that, it's defining some suggestion that you were so resentful your mother and be a complication of imaginary ailments. My guess that for the moment will be that it's the extended itself to a wife who provided you with a similar mother image. But I can tell you this, Mr. Farrington. Forgive me if I repeat myself. It occurs with full fragments of imagination. I believe that the doctor now 
Right, Doctor, snap your thing your thing snap now snap your fingers. Well, what do you think? Well, go ahead, snap your fingers. Any normal sound? Normal? Snap your feet, normal again. Highly delightful. Something normally. Only normal. You're killing me, Doctor. No, my good Harry. Lord Harry. Randall Nielsen had the Trafalgar. You saved both his eyes and his arm. A notical planet, sir. You're four and oh. Bernard speaking? That's all right, Mr. Farrington. Slam it at will. Wait, my guest. You, sir, have a soul to see, man. Bless you, incredible. Absolutely incredible. Mine over matter. My wife obviously the culprit of miserable preoccupation with noise. Literally planted a seed in my head. Incredible that one crew member could do a whole ship, co- do to a whole ship's company. Whole business, not mind of matter. Madam, you're not welcome. The particular court of deck. No, nor shall I say, Admiral. I forget some of my jewelry. I've got some of my jewelry. I shall receive some, and then whenever you point me short, not precisely where I'll be heading. And I, I might I add this, madam. Despite your efforts to capsize this worthy vessels, listen, in a manner of speaking, against the rocks and hard shoals of pencils, a pretty disaffection, the ship remains tight, and all your efforts, worthless and satisfied, but wasteful. Horatio, old pal, let the following be my comments. The overgrown sailor boy, the then mannered, under man, man, head. You are full of incredible nose roses. I wonder if you have cracked before this belay that, madam, belay that. It's so much happened I have had, had just as happened I had a psychotic revelation. Is one thing wrong with you, me? It's you. Simply you, five more men. I'll tell you one more other thing. Of this is mine of matter. So it's only and absolutely mine of a matter. I know that what, what I can do to, to, to what do you know what I can do for you? I can shut you off. Do you realise that? I can literally shut you off because I am a man of such a such credible credible that I can do anything I want to. Now go ahead. Yell at me. Go on, yell at me. Because you, you now, at this moment, I am in process of this science. It's in my inner manner. Matter, I am shutting you out. Fremerton, I really do wonder about you. I really, I wonder why no one's committed you. I really see. Shall I have shut you out? Go on, talk more. more. Really, Oswell? Do you, re- you do need help. You really do need help. You cradle mind of a matter. I want to shut her out. So I simply shut her out. And then, now then, what shall we listen to tonight? Make us away. Uh, Let's see, the actual sounds of Japanese destroyer exploding in Enverra Bay. Complete with boilers hissing and crack fans so crackling and smoke shack explosion. Good, great. Better get ready now out there. They will go raise, they will go, this will go raise properly. Louder, louder, more, more noise, let's hear it. Okay. Better get, get ready out there, go there, so properly. Louder, louder, make some noise, let's hear it. Come on, let's hear it, louder. Yeah. When you just heard from Mr. Roswell, G. Framington, was a senator and pleading with a medical staff to make some noise. He believed the case of rather tragic operation of man's mind coming unhinged. From this, they gave him pills to temporary rest. Little did he know that Mr. Everton, suffering from a case of theoretic justice, tonight's tale of sounds and silences from the twilight zone. <laughs> 